Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a good day. As always, my name is Michael and thanks for joining me today. So guys, today's video might make a few of you really, really upset and that's actually the correct response for this type of video because today I'm going to talk to you about how some banks just flat out steal from their members and get away with it. Now I'm going to quickly say that what I'm about to show you should not happen at all anymore. This is illegal. Most banks stop doing practices like this, but I'd be willing to bet they're still out there trying to steal what they can from unsuspecting members. Now the reason why I'm talking about this video is because one of my commenters um, recently had some experiences with the bank doing this and I just wanted to highlight this stuff so if anyone else kind of feels like hey maybe this happens to me you need to understand what is going on you need to confront your bank about this because this is not a legal practice banks should not be doing this we should not be supporting businesses that try to steal from unsuspecting members so what am I talking about? Um, real quick, guys, it's just called overdraft structuring. It's very, very simple to understand. Just like the last video, I'm gonna give you a scenario of a, a hypothetical situation, and you can clearly see what's going to happen and how banks, back when they were doing this, and probably still are to a certain degree, are taking millions of dollars away from their members. So here's how it works. Let's say that you know on one day, a lot of your payments or transactions for the month cleared your account. Okay, let's say that you know you have a $1,000 rent payment, a $40 gas payment, $10 from a lunch payment, a $100 electricity bill, and let's say a $10 Netflix charge, right? All of that clears in one day, totaling $1,160. Now, let's say that you know on this day, you happen to only have $1,060 in the account. Well, you don't need to be a mathematician to know that you were going to overdraft. That is going to happen because you simply don't have enough funds. Now, while that's obviously not a good thing at all and you should do pretty much everything you can not to overdraft, I want to show you what banks do in these situations to try to screw over many of their clients. So let's say, again, you start off with your $1,060. Um, you know, your $40 gas payment clears, your $10 lunch payment clears, your $100 electric bill clears, your $10 Netflix charge clears, right? After all that is done, you are left with $900. Well, when your rent payment clears for $1,000, you are going to be negative $100 plus an overdraft fee, right? Let's say that, you know, it's $30 in this case, right? Obviously, that's not good, but here's the kind of where the next half comes in. This is the stuff that should piss you off. All right, let's say again, you start off with your $1,060, but instead of charging all of those smaller transactions first, they charge the big one first. They charge the $1,000 rent payment before anything else, right? So after that transaction clears, you've only got $60 left in your account. Well, now they're gonna take out the electric bill, right? So now you're already negative $40 and you've already incurred a fee. Well, now they're going to charge the gas payment and get a fee. Now they're going to charge the $10 lunch payment. They're going to get a fee. And then they'll finish off with the $10 Netflix charge. And guess what? They're going to charge you a fee. So in this example, they charge you a fee four times instead of one. And if $30 is a fee, in the first scenario, you're charged $30 in a fees. Uh, and the second one, you're charged $120 in fees. And this is off one example. Imagine how many people, you know, overdraft on a daily basis. Obviously, that's a really, you know, crappy thing to do, but again, it happens. I work in the industry. I can tell you every single day, probably millions of people overdraft on their account. So this is why, guys, I say it is so important to be on top of your finances and do business with people who are looking out for you. If you've overdrafted recently, obviously do everything you can to correct that and make sure you're not overdrafting anymore, but also go back and look at your statements and see how they were assessed. Did they start off where, well, they credited all the small ones first and then lastly did the big ones to avoid um, overdrafting multiple times or did they do it the opposite where they charge the most expensive uh, transaction first and then the progressively smaller ones. That way they're charging you as many fees as they can. So guys, like I said, this stuff should make you mad. I hope you know none of this goes on anymore. It's re it really is illegal. They're not supposed to be doing this. These transactions are supposed to come through as you know the timestamp indicates. But guys, it's naive to assume that the banks are following every single rule laid out in front of them, right? Look at Wells Fargo. You know, I made a video way back when about the crap that they were trying to pull as far as sales goals, um, and they're Wells Fargo. They're not some small bank that's trying to fly under the radar. They are, 
you know, one of the biggest banks in the world. So it can happen to anyone. So that's what I want to talk about today, guys. I'm sorry if uh, anyone has ever had to deal with this in the past, but if you have experienced anything, um, comment below. If you have any suggestions for the community members, definitely let us know. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you learned something new from it and you were able to strengthen your financial position. I'm going to keep coming out with more videos, so please stay tuned. But go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and have a good day.